You join me here today on an in-session piece. I've been fishing previously for the last few days over on another lake. The wind swung round and unfortunately I feel like the fish have kind of got off of me. I was watching my spots today from out of a tree and unfortunately I've seen no fish sort of in the area from where they were previously and where they were showing sort of in abundance and sort of groups of about five or six passing through in in that sort of general area around this island. Fins come down with the cameras and what we've actually done is entirely because the we weren't actually able to get the swims on the other side of the lake because they were taken what we've actually done is we've ditched that lake entirely and we've swapped complex. We're now actually sat on the back of the wind where we'd want to be. Um, we've got fish showing on us and yeah we're hoping to have a bite basically any second soon. We put a few spawnfuls of bait out and we sat back got all the stuff sorted and we've now got the barbecue ready. Hopefully as we sort of sit in have ourselves some food hopefully the carp will as well and we'll have something to show you before the time it gets dark. So there we go, 23 and a half pounds. Caught as we're just about to have our dinner. Got the barbecue lit. And yeah, hopefully a sign of things to come. So there we go, third fish of the session. Second 20 of the session. A few hours into darkness now. We just sat behind the fire, just kind of having a bit of a chat. And yeah, just had the rods roll off. Really pleased on how the session's going so far. And uh, yeah, hopefully have a few more tonight for you. So the lake we're currently on has got quite a good head of carp in it. The reason why we're on this one today is I've spent the last few days prior to Finn's arrival fishing on another separate lake on the complex, which is sort of my own fishing personally. Fishing quite, quite sort of intricate lakes. I've never, I've never really been one for trying to fish at long distance. I'd much rather sort of fish in and around sort of snaggy intricate areas trying to watch fish from trees and trying to work out my next move from there really in terms of that it keeps you busy walking around trying to find fish and it just kind of keeps your brain active in that term so i was fishing there for the last few days um i'd had what, six six fish out in total just to over 26 pounds um, some of them were absolutely gorgeous i mean i've also had a 43 pound catfish which put up quite a good fight so Finn's arrived and what we've ended up doing is just packing up. I just spent that afternoon prior to Finn's arrival just sort of walking up and down one area of the lake doing a light bit of stalking as I'd seen some fish. Fish start showing in that area. The wind had actually swapped around to a northerly. Um, I woke that morning to actually it pushing a northerly into the bivvy and quite a cold wind waking me up early in the morning. So Finn's arrived and we've ended up just reeling in, taking some of my stuff, putting it in the car um, and having a bit of a walk around the complex and trying to find out where we can fish. Ideally, I would have stayed on that lake and sat on the back of the northerly um, where the wind's actually going to be well reduced. There was a nice flat patch, but unfortunately those swims were taken and I wouldn't have been able to fish anywhere confidently on that lake. So we've had a bit of a walk around and we've ended up on this, this lake we're currently on. So we ended up on the, uh, sat on the back of a northerly wind looking out and we found a few fish showing and we decided that that was the perfect area to start our session. morning so overnight we ended up actually not recasting the rods after three o'clock but five fish in total now and two of them were over 20 as you've previously seen i'm going to spend the rest of the morning getting some hook baits ready and also preparing a few rigs looking forward to the sun coming up a bit more now and hopefully a few more fish coming into the area
Right, so, I've just put three spawnfuls of bait out onto the spot, turned around, and right on cue, my rod's gone off. First part of a double take with the one slightly larger in the net. And if anything, it's an absolute testament to fishing high tracked hook baits over beds of particle. So here you go, second part of that double take. Absolutely chuffed how the session's going so far. We'll run you through the bait in just a second. So I'm now gonna walk you through my spod mix that I've been using this session. It's mainly evolving around a hemp mix. Now the reason for that is because they're shoalfish in this lake. And what we were trying to do is trying to retain the fish once they actually land on us and try and have them stay on the, on the spot as long as possible, picking up small, small, small pieces of food and larger pieces of food as well. Onto our hemp seed initially, we'll add a monster particles, hemp and snail mix. Now, as you can see, I've liquidized this and what this is actually enabling us to do, it'll put a nice scent trail through the water, help to cloud it up and also release more smell through the water than what it would do regularly. Now, on top of that, I've added on some crushed up Atlantic heat boilies. Now, these boilies will help to, once again, increase more um, attraction into the swim, um, alongside using whole boilies as well. Now, we're using a variant of 15 millimeter and also 18 millimeter boilies. Now, I like to use a mixture of size boilies in any sort of mix I'll be using, whether or not it's a single, if I'm fishing singles over, over a mix of boilies, for example, with no particle, I'll still use a variant of boilies. Now, I try and do this because if you're using a variation of sizes of boilies and also fishing boilies over the top like I am, the fish aren't actually getting preoccupied on one side of the boilie and then getting used to like regulating the amount they have to suck in. So, for example, it'd be like if you had to go around and pick up a certain amount of bricks off of the floor. Um, you'd get used to the amount you need to pick them up and then if you had to pick up the next brick, for example, there's a bit more resistance, you'd notice that a lot more. So that'd be your rig in this instance. On top of that, we're then adding some of um, the Atlantic heat matching boily pellet. This will break down over time and release food signals through the water and attract other fish into the area as well, which will kind of create a bit of a feeding situation going on. On top of that, I'm then adding some corn. Maze is actually banned on this um, venue. So what I'm then trying to do is replace that visual element that's not being able to be allowed such as maize with corn so any passing fish might happen to spot that and then be intrigued being brought down into the spot and then find other items such as boilies pellet or on hemp seed for example and then we're, we're, as I previously mentioned we're trying to keep them there as long as possible on top of that I'm then adding some of the Atlantic heat bait glug this is a crucial element to any sort of spod mix is adding some sort of glug on top of that to help increase the attraction throughout the water column both once you've spotted the bait out and also once its baits actually landed on the bottom it will help increase even more attraction into the swim. So with my hemp and snails what I like to do and I very very rarely don't do this it's very rare that I'll just fish hemp and snails just out of the bag or combined with something without doing this to it. I like to liquidize it so I'll use a hand liquidizer or food blender at home and then what I'll do is I'll add it bit by bit, or if it's a hand liquidizer, what I'll do is I'll just um, take all my defrosted hemp and snail mix into a bucket and I'll just keep grinding it down until probably about three quarters of it has just been liquidized. I'll still retain some of the hemp in a whole form, but we're looking to get that cloudy sort of scent profile throughout this mix. Now, this isn't also just limited to obviously hemp and snails. You could use it with like a bloodworm profile, uh, maggots, worm anything that you know is going to be holding that sort of natural flavor such as like the snails um, you'll massively massively benefit through just sort of breaking it down helping to create an instant scent profile now the fish will come into the area and they'll be looking for it but if you're then presenting them with food in front of them that you haven't entirely liquidized the hemp and snail they'll, they'll still be able to find some but if if there's that massive scent trail coming off of this spot they'll be able to hone in, they'll know what they're looking for and they're gonna go and find it. And then along the way, they're gonna start feeding as well on some, some corn, for example, some boilies, uh, maybe there's some pellet down there and eventually your hook bait. How is life treating you? Hey, Viva, mate. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I'm in a hit by a f***ing bat. <laughs> <laughs>
A few, not at the moment though. <laughs> they've gone, they've let me uh, die in peace. <laughs> confident for later, confident that I'm going to not make it until later because of pollen. It's, it's not looking good. So uh, starting from this side, we've got the uh, eye drops. Just help if you get the, uh, as you say, itchy eyes. The classic hay fever tablets. Recommends you take one or two. I've just taken three. And last but not least, the one that wipes me out completely and makes me sneeze more than not sneeze, the nasal spray. When combined, they seem to be working. It's been about 15, 20 minutes. I just need to give it a little bit more time, let my body adjust, and uh, we'll be good to go soon. So, fishing hook baits over a sort of any any bed of particle, I feel this is essential is to use a high attract hook bait. Now, on this session in particular, what I'm using is I'm using, quite simply, I'm using a snowman presentation. So, very, very simple sort of setup, but then it's trying to refine that a little bit more. So, what I'm then doing is I'm hollowing out my 18 millimeter bottom bait, um, adding in, adding these all into a pot. So once they're all in, in the pot and I've finished all the, uh, finished boring all the holes out of those, what I'll then do is I'll add a matching booster liquid onto those. Um, I'll give them a good shake around, make sure they're all evenly coated and then I'll be adding a uh, powder to it. So in this instance, I'm using the crustacean powder from Baitworks. And then what I'm gradually doing there is I'm slowly, slowly coating over the top of these. So I'll add a bit, um, bit of powder until I feel that the, uh, until the boilies are all coated. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, wait a little while. I'll wait for them to sort of like dry out, air dry a little bit more, wait for the powder to sort of harden. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll just basically just repeat the process. Um, add a little bit more of the liquid on, add a bit more of the crustacean powder, give it a good shake up, make sure they're all evenly coated, make sure that none of it's stuck to the bottom because we want to be using all of the powder. We don't want to put any of that to waste. Um, so make sure they're all evenly coated and then give them a good dry. So they are hook baits, they're not being used as bottom baits. So we want to have them dried out slightly so they're going to be staying on the on the hook for as long as possible. No sort of nuisance fish, any crayfish, or anything's going to be actually sort of just tampering with those or like compromising your setup. Because I'm using a quite a critically balanced bait. So I don't want um, parts of that bait to be falling off, unbalancing it, and then creating a setup where the pop-up is actually becoming the dominant force there and dragging most of the rig off the bottom. So on top of that 18 millimeter bottom bait, I'm using a small pink pop-up. Now I'm using it in a washed out pink color, which for me personally, massive confidence in using this color. Um, caught so many fish using this presentation. And yeah, I absolutely love it. We just made a fresh mix. We've been keeping the batches of bait very small this session, sort of about three kilos at a time and then spotting it out to maintain the freshness of the bait going into the swim. We're using baits such as pellet, which will break down over time once it's actually submerged in water, for example, that will be breaking down in and amongst our swim instead of in the bucket. So in terms of bait application, there's not really a sort of set rule for any time of year. There's guidelines. So for the most part in springtime, you think more sort of like firing singles towards showing fish and also zigs towards showing fish and then sort of post spawn, sort of then piling in a bit more particle um, and trying to get the fish on the feed more once they sort of come out of the uh, spawning phase and they're trying to feed and actually regain that weight loss due to spawning, like sort of that weight loss and also energy. Obviously today, we're, we're in late April. Now, you wouldn't generally attribute that behavior to feeding on kilos and kilos of particle, but that's the hand we've been dealt today and through making up small mixes and keeping everything for, sort of fresh and making sure that everything's available at a time, um, we've been able to play the hand we've been dealt. We've been able to continuously land fish and keep a situation going where we've been able to hold fish in the area and continue to feed them and continue to catch them. one here another 20 pounder 
Unfortunately, we do have another one in the net with it, which while we were transferring to the sling, unfortunately managed to escape us. <laughs> ah, well. <laughs> What's just happened? Uh, our fish escape. And managed to get back into the lake. It's an absolutely incredible fish, pristine, amazing mouth on it as well. And hopefully, I'm sure this, uh, I'm sure this action will continue into the hours of darkness. Right, okay, so after last night, we've had a quite a few fish through the night. We've had that double take last night, for example, slash triple take while having my dinner. Um, we've got the rods back out this morning, put a few spawnfuls of bait out, and I seem to be on it already. We've had fish show on the spot, and we've already had a couple of liners. Right, so there we go, first one of the day in the form of this little mirror. Not coming too long after putting a few spodfuls of bait out and topping the swim up. We've had a bit of a chat between us and we think that the fish are actually moving in on both the cloud of the hemp and snail mix that I've liquidised and also the baits actually, the smaller sort of particles that will be hanging around sort of like mid to upper layers. As the sun is sort of it's getting up a lot more now, we're hoping the fish start to get a bit more active, get a bit more active on the spot and start feeding. So rig wise, I'm using the same rig across all three of my rods. Now it's a rig that I've got extreme confidence in and that's a blowback rig. Now it's quite, I'm using quite a short um, length of hook length on this session. Now that's because I'm fishing over particle. Now when fish are actually feeding in, in and around particle, they're obviously not going to be um, like kind of moving around quite a lot. They're feeding in one area. You want them to be picking your hook base up and coming into contact with that lead as soon as possible. So working hand in hand with that short hook length, I'm using an extremely sharp hook. Now I pre-sharpen these at home, so for like sessions when things do start to heat up and kind of you do get quite a lot of action, everything's sort of pre-done for you. Now, so I don't have to sit there and sort of re-sharpen hooks on the bank. All I need to do is just go into this pot, get a hook out, take the, uh, take the cigarette filter off of the end that's protecting the hook point, and then add it onto a fresh new rig and then tie that up. Ultimately, what this concludes in is just absolute confidence in my rigs, just all throughout. Um, the hook holds are all fantastic and it's extremely rare that actually you'll be losing fish on this rig. So on this session, I knew we were gonna get a few bites from the sort of very word go, but I didn't quite appreciate how much of a lesser session this was gonna be. So I think the main reasons for that are attributed down to a few things. Now, bait to obviously hold those fish in the area where they are actually coming through. Rigs, obviously you need a rig that's gonna be working and when a fish actually does take your bait, it's gonna flip, turn and catch and hold, more importantly, into the uh, lip of the mouth. And also location. Now that's location is arguably the most important factor there because you can put your bait in, you can have the best rig in the world, but in all honesty, if the carp aren't there and you're fishing the other end of the lake, for example, you're not going to catch anything. So it's been a quite a couple of hours. We've sat back and we we're just having a think about getting some lunch. 
and we've seen a couple of fish start showing over the spot and sure enough middle rod's just torn off and we're into another fish haven't quite seen it yet but it's staying quite deep which has been a good sign of uh, the larger fish on this session so it's fish number 19 now hopefully fish number 20 isn't going to be too far away in the meantime what we're going to do is we're going to put some more bait out and prep the swim for this evening's pandemonium pandemonium <laughs> So there we go, fish number 20, another 20 pounder. What a fantastic way to end the day. Session so far has passed all expectation. Um, we've had another fish as well, which we just slipped back, which has come in the shape of a small common. And yeah, this has been an absolutely fantastic session so far. Well, there we go. One of the larger residents of the lake, 28 pounds dead on. Caught on that snowman presentation over the liquidized hemp and snail. Absolutely blown away with this one. Well, what a fish and what a way to end the day now. I'm gonna get the rods back out, give it a couple more spoonfuls of bait and hopefully, hopefully have another one. But I don't think it's gonna quite match this. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. up again I'm gonna do it. There might be a bream on the spot, that's another possibility because of the size of the bait. Mm. Just wait till it takes a bit of line. It might be just sat there shaking its head currently trying to get it. That's it. There we go. Right, so uh, would you believe it? Successive bites, one after the other. Within half an hour of casting out, another one of the A team at 27 pounds and four ounces. Over the moon, it's turning to out to be inc absolutely incredible. We'd, we'd given it probably, I think, two spawns over the spot of uh, just pure hemp and snails. There was none of the mix attached to that one. It was just the hemp and snail mix and it's, it's gone off within, as I say, probably about half an hour of spawning. Absolutely blown away with how this has gone. Probably got about another half an hour of, uh, of daylight left. And in that meantime, there's, there's fizzing all over the spot as well. Um, it could, you never know, we might get another one. I'm running out of bait now, so now's a brilliant time to draw the session to a close, pull the rods in, head home and have some lunch. To have banked two of the largest fish in the lake in quick succession within sort of about half an hour of each other was a massive achievement for me on this lake. The relevancy sort of overall of a 27 pound and a 28 pounder in the sort of like overall carp fishing world is not massive, but in a lake like this where there's some of the re largest residents of the lake, it's huge and I, I couldn't be happier with the results. Oh.